What's going on guys? Shane here with founding trainer of Rumble Boxing in Los Angeles and one of the best mid holders in the game, AJ Perez. Oh, about the best, man. Hey, maybe top three, all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, so guys, today AJ's going to be bridging the gap between boxing fitness and boxing for competition. He's going to be talking about rhythm, he's going to be talking about breathing and biomechanics. Let's take a look. Okay, so fight tips. A lot of people have recently been joining boxing gyms or boxing studios for cardiovascular purposes, right? So for fitness, it's growing in popularity. But a lot of people don't want to run on a treadmill. They, want to, they don't want to jump on an elliptical. Boxing is a fun way to get your cardio in. So let's break that down. Cardiovascular, right? Breathing, okay? The ability to last longer in your workout, okay? Now, what we're going to break down is the breathing. First, for offense, right? To achieve a punch, you're going to want to exhale during the punch. So Shane demonstrated jab. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> right out of his mouth, a sharp exhale, okay? So... For offensive purposes, exhaling while you punch, give me a cross, give me a hook, there's a breath out, okay? So that's just for, to let go of the punch. Now, for defensive purposes, okay, if he happens to throw a punch, go ahead and throw your jab, boom, his body's open, his head is open. Anytime you let go of a punch, whether it's your right hand, left hand, hook, cross, uppercut, a part of you is vulnerable to take a punch. Now, if you have to absorb impact, you're gonna wanna be breathing out, okay? So if you take a punch, right? Go ahead and throw a punch at me. And if I didn't breathe out, I have a harder time absorbing the impact. If you ever had the wind knocked out of you, it hurts, okay? So to absorb the impact better, if I threw a punch and he clipped me at the same time, I'll be able to absorb the impact and come back better with breathing out. So offense, defense, and cardio. If you're breathing out for the punch, breathing in after, you have an easier time staying in the fight or the workout. Okay, so cardio, offense, defense, it all ties in together, okay? Okay, so movement patterns, okay, we have rotation, we have extension, we have breathing. There's a lot of things that go into throwing a punch. First punch most people tend to learn, right, is the jab, right? the number one punch, jab. Now, this is the weakest punch you have in your arsenal. We acknowledge that, we're okay with it, but if you could generate power in this punch, you generate power in every other punch. Now, when you're throwing this punch, four key things I want you to keep in mind when you're throwing it to execute it. You have to do all four at the exact same time. Let's talk about number one, extension. You have to extend your arm to generate power, okay? Now, number two, rotation. You have to rotate your body into the punch, all right? So number three, breathing. You have to exhale at the same time. Go ahead and do all three. Okay, now one more step that tends to get overlooked, you will hear sometimes in boxing gyms, is lowering your center of gravity, okay? Or other terms, what we can use? Sitting, sitting down. down, okay, yeah. sitting down on a punch, okay? Now you put all four of those together at the exact same time, you achieve a really good shot. Okay, and that's for the weakest punch, but if we do that with the cross, rotation, extension, breathing, sitting down on the punch. Do it for the hook, your other side, Uppercuts, you can repeat the process over and over again for every punch you throw and consistently generate power. Okay, so one more thing I want to get this through to you guys is if you're brand new to boxing, all right, it's easy to see the movement and think, oh, he's throwing a punch or she's throwing a punch and it's the upper body doing the work. And that's wrong. Right? Yeah. Big word that a lot of fitness people use is the kinetic chain. Yeah. And that's being able to generate power and movement from point A to point B. And if you skip anything along the body, any muscle group over into a muscle group that isn't coming first, say you turn your foot into the punch and you use your shoulder right away, but you didn't engage your lap. Okay? Big muscle group right here, you'll see it fired up really easily. Now, you're gonna see a lot of people or you're gonna be a beginner and you're gonna try to throw a punch and just use your arm. Why do I know that? Because I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to throw my hooks really wide and I didn't understand how to generate power from the ground up. Yeah. Okay, and I had to get a shoulder surgery. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> anyways, you wanna be safe, you wanna be effective, you wanna make sure that you're using your body correctly. So, generating power from the ground up and making sure that you're engaging every single muscle group and keeping your upper body relaxed until the point of impact when you need it, okay? So let's use a jab. All right, now hold the jab out there. Power from the ground up, his lats engage, his deltoid engages last 
at the point of impact, boom, now our shoulder's going, reset, and now it's relaxed, okay? So, kinetic energy coming from the ground up and extending, you don't wanna freeze or be tight at any point during that movement. Bonus fight tip, okay? Now, one thing that gets very looked over when coaching somebody how to box is, what do you explain to them to do when they're not throwing a punch, defending themselves, or moving their feet? Uh-oh. <laughs> it tends to happen often where beginners freeze. Now, it's hard to communicate to somebody, hey, find a boxing rhythm, something that's efficient, something that's gonna allow them to do, achieve something offensively, defensively, or to evade, or to advance, okay? And you wanna be able to do those things right away. So one thing that I like to teach people is an active recovery. It's a big word that we use in fitness, right? When you finish an exercise, you want to put your body in active recovery because you're going to recover faster and more efficiently and be able to do the exercise or achieve another set. So say you finish the bench press. Okay. Yeah. As soon as you jump off the bench press, you just stand still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be comfortable. You're going to want to shake your arms out a little bit. You're going to want to relax and right. get ready for another set. That's an active recovery. You're moving your body a little bit. Right. Now in your boxing stance, you should be constantly in an active recovery, okay? So as you're moving, you're finding a rhythm where you're stabilized, you're ready to defend, to throw a punch, or to be able to evade or advance. So footwork, offense, defense, you can do it all, and you should be able to do it all right away. And it's hard to do if you're frozen. So when you're not throwing a punch, trying to be in an active recovery, or just finding a boxing or fighting rhythm, you're gonna do it all. Let's do offense. Jab, cross, let's do footwork, get back. Step in. Go. Let's do defense. Cover up. You can't do that while you're frozen. Okay? Always be moving. Always be in an active recovery, for lack of a better term. Okay? All right, guys. There you have it. So just to cover some of the topics that we talked about, it was breathing and the importance of it to make sure that you're properly defending in case you take a hit. Let's say they yeah. slip your jab and they throw a jab to the body. Right? And the importance of cardiovascular. Just, just as an anchor to remind yourself to breathe. Then we covered the four key points, which were... Oh, four key points, okay? Extension, rotation, breathing, shh, right? and lowering your center of gravity. You do it all at the same time, shh, you achieve a perfect punch. That's how you get that perfect punch. And then we talked about uh, the kinetic chain and how you don't want to just throw arm punches. You want to use the rotation of the hips, driving off the ground, activating the lat muscle upon impact. And then we talked about the bonus tip, which you were so kind to share, uh, which was finding that rhythm afterwards, um, that active recovery. So after you throw your shots, you're not just turning into a robot. Think of it like a car, right? If there's some acceleration, if you're already moving a little bit, it's going to be easier to then. Ooh, I like that. I'm stealing it. I'm stealing it. I like that. <laughs> it's going to be easier to, to throw the punch or move away and slip and, and yeah. block. Footwork, offense, defense, it's a lot easier to achieve while you're moving in an active recovery or just tactically trying to size up your opponent instead of... Freezing. Yeah. yeah, and you're not going <laughs> to guess how too tense and all those muscles up. So there you have it, guys. Check out AJ's Instagram. Link is in the description below. Like I said, one of the best med holders. Very fun to watch. You're going to learn a lot following his stuff. So please support. And if you're in the LA area, take a class of his at Rumble Boxing. You guys are going to love it. A lot of fun. Gotcha. Until next time, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. Until then, I'm Shane. I'm AJ. Fight tips. Here's a Superman punch. Yeah. <laughs> For the underdogs. <laughs>